Do you remember being five years old and having to learn all 26 letters of the alphabet? A, B, C, D. Well, think about it. It could have been way worse. When you're learning a new language, you often have to pick up an entirely new alphabet or script. But 26 letters? Try 50,000. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 alphabets so complex they make English look like a spring break. And one of these even makes the first sound that ever existed. I'm Kwekanashi, Omis Partia, that we source from Kwekanashi, Ikwanos, Chaos, Shisha, Ikwanos, Destruxia, Destabilizatia. The first time I heard Georgian, I thought someone was playing a bit of a prank on me. And when I saw it written, I thought, Elvish? See, Georgia is this little country here wedged between Turkey and Russia, and the language sounds so unusual. And if you've never seen how they write, well, prepare yourself. This is like no alphabet on Earth. It's one of the few scripts in the world that isn't derived from any other, and no one even knows where it came from. But the alphabetical order, A, B, C, D, is similar to Greek, so there may be something there. The more amazing part of it is that there are three versions of it. Yeah, you would have loved your school teacher. See, if you study Georgian, you'll probably learn the modern version, which comes from an old word for a warrior on horseback. Nice. There are 33 letters, no capitals, and a bucket full of strange sounds. Ava. Ava. So, and the words with U would be Ava. Papa. Fascinating, and that's minus the five letters they decided to cancel. But the real problem comes when you have to say whole sentences. It's almost as if you're pronouncing it from the sides of your throat or from your tonsils, like I was on Reddit recently and having a great time laughing at people's wisecracks about Georgian. Okay, but how will you know you're seeing Georgian words? The telltale letters are little M's holding swords and one that looks like a carrot. And they don't only write Georgian with this script, by the way. If you want to learn any of these bad boys, well, you're learning this alphabet. <laughs> Uh, dancing with, Tibetan spelling is a disaster of cosmic proportions. Seriously, English spelling looks like a walk in the park. The script is full of dramatic downward strokes, like a row of knives slicing through the page. You might like this story. An ancient Tibetan king sent a young man to India to learn the alphabet, and he came back with a version from Kashmir, and then adapted it into something unbelievably complex for Tibetan. Pretty impressive, except over the centuries, the pronunciations changed drastically, but the spellings froze in time. Now, Tibetan uses a type of script called an abugida, where you stack letters to build words. So you start with a root letter and then pile other letters around it, ab above, below, on the sides. A single Tibetan syllable can have up to seven letters crammed in. Each symbol starts with a built-in A sound, and you tweak it with little curls and twists to change the vowels. Also, you can flip the consonants around. That's right. What's really weird is the way you say the words is way shorter than how you write them. It's silent letters everywhere. It makes French look like a walk in the park. The ones at the top are always silent, but you can't just ignore them because they change how everything else sounds. Sometimes you can't even tell which is the main letter. And to top it off, Tibetan is tonal, adding even more layers to the puzzle. The last spelling reform, in case you were wondering, was over 800 years ago. Great, so it's the opposite of a phonetic language. Got it. And if you're wondering why nothing changes, it's because you can't mess with a sacred language, you see, and you definitely can't touch the sound that existed before all the other sounds. In Tibetan philosophy, this sound is even more primal than the om you might have heard people chanting. They see it as the beginning of sound itself, as in it existed before the universe. Let that sink in and think for a minute if you would dare to mess with that. Now tell me, how much do you know about the Rastafarian king Haile Selassie? Because I can tell you what alphabet 
he wrote with. Can you imagine writing that goes back to the BC days? This is one of the oldest scripts still used today, an alphabet that always looks as if it's been drawn freehand. Check it out. See, it was originally made for a dead language, but it's still alive and kicking in Ethiopia, where they speak Amharic. Now, Ethiopia really stands out in Africa because it's the only country that has a native African script, although with Arabic roots. There are seven vowels and 31 consonants, so it's not so bad until you realize that each consonant has seven variations. That's right, and this is quite amusing. If you type on an Ethiopian keyboard, the letters still look like they've been bumped into by a speeding rhino, and it's no mistake. The wonky letters are intentional. It's all about keeping the ancient look alive, you see, so you get this animated looking alphabet, which weirdly makes reading easier. I mean, come on, it's pretty cool, right? There are more than 200 of these funny mutating letters. Ha, hu, he, ha, he, he. And let's not forget the fun stuff. The H sound has four totally different symbols. Another four make a glottal sound. Uh. And there are these funky three-legged letters doing the twist. It's pretty wild. Uh. Ha. Uh. And what about Amharic punctuation? I knew you were asking that. Well, it's just dots everywhere. It's insane, but if you think it's as stunning as I do, I'll be waiting for your tattoo ideas. Now, real quick, in December of last year, I launched Teacher AI with my friend Shama, an AI driven language website that offers unlimited speaking practice in the language that you're learning. And I'm happy to announce that we have recently launched a brand new, much improved mobile app for Teacher AI on iPhone and Android. Now, this is not for beginners because it's not a language course, it doesn't teach you a new language, but what it does do is it allows you to practice speaking as much as you want to your heart's content with real human like interaction without having to book a time with an expensive tutor at 3 p.m. next Wednesday, without any of the stress or nerves of speaking with a teacher when you're not confident in the language yet. In fact, if you already know the basics and just need more speaking practice in order to become confident in the language, well, this is for you. To check it out, just click the link in the description below. You can practice one of over 25 languages with an AI clone of myself, or any other popular language teachers on the internet that we have, and your teacher can speak your target language and your own native language at the same time, which means that if you get stuck and you don't know a word, well, you can just use words or ask questions in English or whatever other language to keep the conversation going. You can click on words to see their translations really quickly, you can review them later, and this all just makes speaking so much easier. And the best part is that you can try out the brand new Teacher AI app and website completely for free with a free trial by clicking the link in the description below, or of course, you can scan the QR code that you're going to see right up above here somewhere. Now back to the video. Jake to Kakaori Nagara, Kare o Ichinimai no Kisha ni Michibi te iku yona character da toyu ni kamete mas. The most confusing part about Japanese writing is that it uses not one but three writing systems: kanji, hiragana, and katakana. And yes, you need to learn all three. They're iconic, and they all work together as one. Kazuhei, Sakura-chan. Hiragana is the everyday one that gives Japanese its flowing look. Katakana is Hiragana's edgier cousin and it's got sharper lines and handles foreign words and sound effects, kind of like how we use italics in English. Hiragana and Katakana are normal scripts that just make sounds, but Kanji is a different thing altogether. Better take those kiddie gloves off for this because Kanji is the big boss of Japanese writing. They are complex symbols borrowed from Chinese and there are thousands of these bad boys. The Kanji for car could be broken down into four parts. One, sun, another one, then we draw the vertical line down the middle. That vertical line is last. Now just learning kanji can take years if you're a mere mortal, and most have more than one way to pronounce them. And there's also this thing called okurigana. These little dudes might look like letters, and in fact in other situations in Japanese they are, but don't be fooled, here when they come together with kanji they just have like a grammar job. They are hiragana that follow the kanji around like shadows to point out the verb tenses and adjectives. Japanese is crazily beautiful, but it is also a real firecracker. <laughs> You probably recognize this language, it's very well known, and if you want to learn some truly gorgeous writing, well, you might want to try Arabic. When I lived in Doha and in Cairo, I was surrounded by Arabic script everywhere, and it really makes an imprint on your on your brain. You, you, it's unforgettable. You meet people there who make art with this script. 
That is so satisfying. Now, Arabic script is called an abjad, and this is where the trouble starts. Abjads don't write any short vowels. You literally don't see them. They are all invisible, unless you're lucky enough to be reading something with these tiny little marks called diacritics sprinkled in for learners. In fact, in my uh, book of Arabic stories, we have diacritics everywhere because guess what? It helps you to read. But most places, most things that you read in Arabic are not going to have those diacritics, meaning you don't know what the vowel is. You've got to guess the vowels from the context, which means you have to know the word in order to... It's tough. There are only 28 letters in Arabic. That's the easy part. But a lot of these have the same base shape with different dots that can totally change the, the, the letter or the word. And the endless marks, those diacritic marks, they're not just for vowels. They can dramatically change the pronunciation and the meaning. Look at this word. It could mean a friend, a seed, or love. It all depends on where those dots are. One dot away from disaster. Oh, and just to add to the fun, there is also a glottal stop of sorts, the Hamza. Now, in Arabic, you write from right to left and always a flowing cursive style, and the letters never sit still. They shapeshift depending on their position in a word at the start, the middle, or the end. So now it starts to get really quite challenging to read. Jeem. Jeem. So this is a strange little weightlifting machine. You have to push down a lever to hit that dot. But where is this machine? It's at the jeem. The jeem. One classic word you might have seen or heard before is salem, and it means peace. Now check out the jaw-dropping calligraphy. Can you see how the letters connect? Even crazier, Arabic script is used for other totally different languages like Persian and Pashto, each adding their own twists to the letters. It's a constantly moving target. هذا الفيديو نصوره لكم لتتعرفوا على عالم جديد، على ثقافة جديدة. And by the way, if you're interested in learning a new language but you're a bit worried about this script because it seems tricky and hard, well, I have a solution for you because at Story Learning, we offer a wonderful way to escape ordinary language learning and it all happens through the adventures of stories. You see, the best secret to learn a language is from the inside, so you're not just trying to mimic the sounds or forge someone's cool Tibetan signature, but to do it really naturally all on your own. And you can start telling your own stories in an interesting way because I see you. I know you have an interesting story. And we deal with scripts in a very interesting way because we don't just teach you every single letter individually. We show you inside the story so that you can get used to how it, the script actually looks in real life. Anyway, if you'd like to find out how to learn a language this way, you can scan the QR code up above to get my free story learning kit. There's also a link in the description. There's a bunch of free stuff in there that shows you how to start learning a language with stories. Now, where were we? No, we're going to go to the north list. You get the eyes of this. The Cherokee alphabet has a really interesting story. It was invented in the 1800s by a guy who was amazed at the talking leaves of European writing. So he spent 12 years designing a Cherokee alphabet. And if you wonder why some of them look like Latin letters, well, he used an English spelling book for inspiration without knowing what the letters meant. Very innovative. In the end, he made 85 symbols. 85. In a jersey, yeah. E, na. This kind of script is called a syllabary because each letter is a whole syllable. If you look at a chart, the top row is the six vowel sounds and the rest are consonants mixed with those vowels. And Cherokee has one little extra S sound hiding in there. Can you see it? But here's a plot twist. The letters you think you recognize will definitely fool you because the D makes an R sound and the A sounds like go. So have fun with all the mismatches. Ant. Ant. E, pumpkin. E, ya. E, ya. Do, ya. Nigalis tanaska. Do, ya. Ni, ga, ni, sta, naska. You were expecting that to be a whole sentence, weren't you? Well, this is a fascinating aspect of Cherokee. Very long words. Okay. By the way, writing by hand will help you learn the script much faster because if you can connect each letter's shape with a physical action, it will stick much better in the old brain. Remember that for the rest of these impossible alphabets. <laughs> Mongolian script is another rare beast. It's one of the few writing systems in the world that runs vertically, but also left to right. A word is basically a straight line with lots of things sticking out the side. It reminds me of those horses with dreadlocks. Ever seen those things? Yeah. Wild manes blowing in the step winds. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, 
As you can probably guess, this strange top to bottom alphabet is extremely rare in writing. Now, now, don't flip your screen to try and read it. You build words vertically by stacking letters, and like Arabic, it's always in cursive, so the letter shaped change, but it looks really quite badass once you get the hang of it. Barakh malachin humus. Tere tarachin humus. And believe me, this will not come easily. Mongolian has sounds that just don't exist in English, which is probably why they can sing like this. But it also has some rare things among languages. Zero sounds for K and L. I'm serious, and get this, somehow there are 13 vowel letters, but only seven vowel sounds. B kute, B sonic. If Randy can do it, you can do it. I should mention that these days they use the Cyrillic alphabet, but they're fighting hard for the traditional one to win. So is Mongolian the hardest? Well, I don't know, but it definitely gets unicorn status in my book. If you love intricate lace patterns, well, you'll be obsessed with this one. In Cambodia, they have an alphabet that's crazy long and the letters are as densely packed as the nearby jungle. It's called the Khmer script, and if this little girl can handle it, well, it can't be that bad. You've got to see this writing in action. It absolutely blew my mind. I have a little trick one of my students suggested for practicing handwriting in strange alphabets. Look on Amazon for some of those preschool writing books for kids. They look a bit like this. But do not expect this to be easy. Khmer has 74 letters, yeah, that's right, and 23 of them are vowels. Now, I don't know how good your maths is, but that equals a fairly big number of sounds that you never make in English. How do you even fit 74 letters on a keyboard? Oh, three on each key. Gotcha. And then meet subconsonants, tiny versions of letters squashed under bigger ones to form crazy consonant clusters. And it's subconsonant the same, yeah, like this. Uh, just smaller than, than consonant. Meanwhile, those vowels are up to their own shenanigans. Those same vowels can have completely different sounds depending on what consonant they are with because the consonants have a high sound and a low sound. Yeah, I might be giving up over here, but FYI, Khmer wins the punctuation prize hands down. So we call this punctuation as dollar or red teeth because it's the same as Red teeth. Sweating yet? Well, you should be, because this is this is hard stuff, but don't worry, there is one thing your brain will like. You write Khmer from left to right, just like English, and thank God for that. Mind you, there aren't any spaces between words, it can't be that easy. So good luck to you, I'm moving on. Uh, can you believe this word just means tulip? Well, if you're a terrible speller, keep listening because instead of an alphabet with spelling, Chinese uses characters called Hanzu. Think of them a little bit like emojis. Sounds quite insulting, doesn't it? But bear with me. You don't read them letter by letter, you just understand the whole meaning. Only problem is, Hanzu are way more complex than emojis, of course. See, in Mandarin, each symbol represents a concept, and they often have hints for pronunciation baked in, and then you combine these to make words and sentences. Some characters are simple, like sun or moon, and if you stick sun and moon together, you get Brightness. Makes sense, right? Mind you, stick half and moon together and you get fat. Don't ask why. Car. Steam car. Train. Fire car. Bike. Single car. Not so bad, huh? Until you see insanely complicated characters like this one. A whopping 48 strokes later, you get the sound of a flying dragon. What's that in English again? You see, Mandarin characters are built from smaller parts called radicals, and most of them have clues that you need to figure out. But okay, so what are all these other characters that don't mean anything? Well, I'm glad you asked. They are for possession or past tense. Meanwhile, lots of other characters are just used as sound fillers at the end of sentences, you know, to add a little bit of feeling. And you've got to watch out. The stroke order is a really big deal. If you write it wrong, it's like scribbling nonsense. Take the word meaning I or me. It has seven very specific strokes. If most difficult means biggest number, we have a winner because Chinese has over 50,000 characters. Luckily, though, you only need about 3,000 for everyday stuff. So, you know, no pressure. 
don't feel intimidated over there. I got you. It's actually so crazy logical, you'll end up questioning English. Good smelling water, outside power, pool chain, coffee color, bear cat. Could any writing outdo Chinese? Well, let me introduce you to the most notorious spelling in the world. Thai writing looks amazing, but it is very, very hard to spell with, and it has something to do with seriously outdated letters. I'm talking about letters that should have been buried a long time ago because they no longer match the way that people speak. You see, Thai writing is not only really old, but it inherited some fossilized letters from Sanskrit. Yet to this day, they use this archaic writing system, even though they've ditched a bunch of the sounds. So look at these five little cuties here. They all have the exact same pronunciation, a hard k sound. But, but wait, nobody writes with these two letters anymore, so why are they still in the alphabet? And I hear you still find keyboards that have those letters on them. Why? Thai, I mean, why? So, you want Thai? This is precision writing, my friend. The only difference between the shape of these two letters is Nanu has the loop on the right side instead of the left side. What fun this is, an alphabet with 44 consonants for writing, but only 21 consonant sounds. Also, it is an abugi there, so we still have these 16 vowels, which combine to make 28 to 32 vowel sounds. And you've got to figure out where to put them, because Thai words are written in a very unique way. If that sounds like a lot to keep track of, don't worry. Vowels can be long or short. In this case, sara a is a long vowel that makes the sound a. And, and you have to write vowel next to the vowel. It would be like writing vowel e and vowel i to spell English. Interesting spelling, huh? But that's still not all. Thai has tones, and unlike most other tonal languages with Thai, you do have to write the tones on the letters. There are four of them, and if you don't write the tone mark, you're saying something completely different. I mean, if you are a dance choreographer, which I am obviously not, this might be just up your alley, and then you can write absolutely beautiful things. But if you'd rather start with the easiest alphabets in the world, then you should probably watch this video next, because you can actually learn the whole alphabet in just a couple of hours.